is a complete break of trust from the Barnett government over our rights and our choices. Mr Barnett is leading the most belligerent government in living memory. Yes. And he should be condemned for it. And I can tell you now, the only way to condemn Mr Barnett is at the ballot box. He has to be heard far and wide, and his puppets, Mr Nalder, that he cannot ignore the community, he cannot ignore the wishes of the people of Western Australia, and he cannot desecrate these wetlands. He cannot drive a six-lane freeway, a tollway, a privatised road through the communities of Western Australia and expect to get off scot-free. You have to hold him to accountable. We will hold him accountable in here. When you get to the ballot box in 2017, he must hear it loud and clear. And the person that can deliver a true change, a future you can believe in, and put uh, some sense into the madness that's going on with the roads in Western Australia, is the next Premier of Western Australia, Mr Mark McGowan. Thanks very much, Peter. And can I uh, thank you all for coming out this afternoon uh, for this uh, meeting. Uh, to demonstrate to the government that the people of Perth do not accept their plans. Uh, can I also acknowledge that there's other protesters who are currently down at Row 8 uh, confronting uh, and taking up the case. I'm looking at the types of people that are here and I can see why they, they needed 50 police officers to confront you. <laughs> Very dangerous looking group of people you are. I think seriously what this shows is this is a community campaign made up of ordinary members of the community who just want to do the right thing by the environment, uh, do the right thing by their homes, uh, do the right thing by a sensible set of transport planning initiatives uh, for, for Western Australia and people who just don't want to see a monumental waste of taxpayers' money. There's so many issues involved here, but I'll go through them as quickly as I can. First of all, those photos are absolutely magnificent. What they show is the quality of the Bealia wetlands. There's not many left. There's not many left where Perth has, we have filled them in, we've built over them and the like. There's not many left, but the Bealia wetlands are a spectacular example. And I know that people do appreciate their nat natural beauty. And if you go there and you see it, uh, as uh, all of us here have, you understand why this is a bad plan. The second point is, this is a monumental waste of taxpayers' money. The Perth Freight Link is around $1.7 billion dollars and it doesn't fix the problem. Even, the Perth Freight Link doesn't, if it's built in its entirety, it doesn't connect to the Fremantle port. So therefore you're building a road that doesn't reach its destination. But on top of that, row eight, which is what the government is now saying uh, is their first stage, is a $500 million road to nowhere. It doesn't fix any problems whatsoever. It's a 5.2 kilometre road from the Kwinana Freeway to Stock Road and then it stops. It doesn't fix a single transport problem confronting our city. You think about the cost of this road. $500 million for five kilometres. $100 million per kilometre. $10 million per 100 metres. $1 million per 10 metres of road. Have you ever heard of a more expensive white elephant than that? <laughs> Never. An extraordinary amount of taxpayers' money spent on a road that doesn't fix any problems. The long-term solution, as we all know, 
to the freight issues confronting our state are these. First of all, first of all more freight on rail. We currently only have around 13% of our freight on rail into Fremantle Port. That means 87% of our freight. Clearly, we can do The wetlands, the environment that you're seeking to protect, it's an absolute jewel. And we need things like environmental protection policies to make sure that they have laws in place to protect them. The work that you've done though, it's been seen right around the state, right across the country. And the views, the power of the, uh, the voice of the people, it's getting stronger than ever. And to hear more about that, I'll pass on to, to my colleagues who are just as passionate about this. They are the defenders of their local patches. But don't forget, the Barnett government doesn't care about the environment, doesn't want to hear from you, doesn't want to tell you about these things. So the only way to solve this problem is to make sure that in 16 months we have a Labor government hey, in place. We've got Thank a, you. a great community. We've got a great community that has been out there fighting to say, this project is wrong, it should be abandoned. We want you to come up to the public gallery, you get there um, through the south entrance, just up those stairs, uh, at two o'clock for question time, as Mark said, and then we'll be debating at about quarter to three, we'll be debating this very issue. But there's someone here uh, that I think you'd also like to hear exactly how he can justify this decision, how he can justify $1.6 billion of West Australians money to destroy the wetlands, to take people's houses and not actually fix, it, fix our freight problem. Premier Barnett, I was wondering if you'd like to address the crowd here and explain, <laughs> and explain your rationale for this project. Premier Barnett. We pay your salary, come on! I'm just making the point, Panda, I'm just making the point. I'm making the point, I would have much rather heard from members of this community group. Um, that's why I came out. Respect your views about the beauty weapons. I truly well, I've walked through there, I've walked through there. Uh, and I urge you to have a look at where the route of row eight actually goes. We have. Okay. No, it, it goes. It, it How goes. How many know on the, where it goes? It goes. How many know where it goes? How many have walked that route? Yes. Okay. It go. It goes between the lakes. There is an area of wetland which it will cross. The road will be elevated above it, a bridge structure. So, in, in other words, any any migration of uh, native species, hand or animal, if like. Uh, can can move under that or progress under that bridge. Now look, there, there will be there will be there will be significant disturbance during construction. No one would deny that. How, however, when this road is built, it will not interfere with the natural environment. It will not. This project this project has been around for a long, long time. You all know that. Rubbish as well. It's been it's got the highest environmental standards. And what, And, what, and this morning, this morning, in case you're not aware, yes, workers did go onto the site. What they were drilling was to check the environmental conditions in the water table to ensure that they are met. They weren't into construction. It was the environment. Part of the environmental assessment process was a requirement that that testing of below ground conditions. That's all that's happening. That's true. That's how we can make sense. Because, because. Because the contracts for construction will be awarded before Christmas, that's the expectation. And part of that, part of that will be the environmental conditions. So that was environmental testing taking place out of the site today. That is all it is. Construction contracts have not been awarded. Now, a number of you are saying a road to nowhere. Well, no, 
It's a road that starts at the Quinana Freeway. The first and most expensive part of it is an interchange around Fiona Stanley Hospital, which I think everyone would accept is needed. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get major future congestion around that interchange. So that's the first and most expensive part of it. Uh, it then goes to Stock Road. So it's been extended from the original Row 8 through to Stock Road. And Stock Road is not a road to nowhere. Stock Road is the access point to the existing inner harbour and a future outer harbour. So it is a road that is required both for the inner harbour and the outer harbour. This road is required. Now, I, ac I accept you're going to oppose it and I respect your opinions, but the government has made its decision. The contract will be awarded and construction will be done in such a way that the impact on the environment is kept to an absolute minimum. Absolute minimum. And that is the reality. Thank you. Before you leave, Premier, before you leave, could you answer one or two more questions? Premier, can you ask, can you answer the questions of how acid sulphate soils will be fixed in the wetlands? Can you tell us how the trucks are going to go through at least 14 sets of traffic lights to get to Panana? Can you tell us how those um, animals that need to um, move long distances to lay their eggs will get through those areas. Can you tell us about the overshadowing of the land from that? There is a lot of reasons why this has been so, um, has been in there in the EPA for such a long time. Premier, can you tell us why you won't wait one week until the Supreme Court action? Can you call off the people at Main Roads? We want one week before the Supreme Court action. That's what the Premier should be asking for. Why is he hell-bent in getting this going when it's a waste of our money? I, absolutely wasteful. I thank the Premier for actually being here. Um, we call on Dean Nell. That is a one-lane dirt track. Are you telling us that you can put a four-lane freeway through the same area of a one-lane track? Do you think we're all stupid? <laughs> Look, I'm happy to I'm happy to make comment on on what we're doing and why we're doing it. And you know, we have rerouted this uh, row eight section north from where it was. It was originally going to go through the main lake, and we shifted it north That's to run idea. run parallel alongside the high pol high voltage power lines. Now, the the amount of wetlands that is affected in this, and we are going to bridge over the top of it. And I hope some saw the vision on Channel Seven last week, but. Um, we are going to bridge over the top of it. It accounts for less than half a percent of the total Belia wetlands. And it's an ecosystem. So, so can, I, can, I tell, can I share with you, I've personally, I've personally hand-read Carnaby Cockatoos. I've personally hand-read red tailed Black Cockatoos, Western Road, Zeros, 28. I've hand-read a lot of these birds because my family and I have been involved in uh, the sanctity of our native species. That you are destroying. So what I'm saying is, <laughs> and so what I'm saying is, we have looked at this and gone through a, a proper due process as regard to the environment. So we've been through we've been through full processes regarding this, and the government is moving ahead. We believe that we are being environmentally responsible with regard to this project. And as far as as far as what people are talking about with Freight Link and the Outer Harbour and Inner Harbour, I guarantee you that we've got we want to progress with the Outer Harbour. So I can tell you now, I can tell you now that there are major environmental concerns regarding the Outer Harbour. Major Get environmental concerns. And, do and so what, what I have done have shown that the what I have also done, would you like me to talk or am I better off just going in? What I, would, so what I would like to share with you is that I've also done analysis regarding uh, the benefit cost ratios of this project <laughs> with the inner harbour and outer harbour being built as quickly as possible. People, people think this is all about trucks and I can tell you it's not all about trucks. 86% of the benefit, 86% of the benefit is regarding congestion and normal passenger vehicles. There are huge productivity gains to be gained That's by the freight industry for something there. You've already got the data. Let us show. Where's I'm happy to. I'm happy to be putting information out there. Anyway, I can't answer can I, questions. Can I ask you a question? I'm, I've got to get into Parliament for question time. So. No, this um, is time.
Dean, when, when, will you you Dean, when will you release the business case? When That's can you have that openness that you from from so that we can see what He actually told them in plain English what he has been secretly up to for so long. Um, he also said that the, the reason why they called it the Perth Freight Link was just to get the federal money. He said it was just, it was really just another freeway. He actually said this in plain English to residents of White Gum Valley. It was reported in the Western Suburbs Post newspaper. So these, everything these people say is just, a, is just untrue. What we really need to do is to at least double the rate of container traffic going on rail and we need, if we're going to spend any money on infrastructure, it should be spent on the railway infrastructure. Exactly. Yes. Very straightforward. Now, the, uh, isn't that great that we got the Premier and the Minister for Transport at one of our meetings? That was pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you for coming up here and getting them out to answer some questions. And I've got to acknowledge the great work of Kim Dravniak, the organizer of Rethink the Link. Fantastic work. And I also want to acknowledge the tremendous efforts of Barry he Healy, who was just here. Barry, where are you? Good on you, mate. Good job. Now, if anybody was at the, the uh, wonderful rally on the weekend, we know this is not a small issue, is it? This is a major issue. This is an issue that involves people from all around the metropolitan area. This is an issue we will fight to the end. And this is an issue that is going to save our wetlands. Now, I'm only going to take two minutes because these guys got to go into question time and have more argy-bargy as they do in the lower house. <laughs> know that in the upper house I will be asking the Minister for Police, how many cups did she dedicate to go and watch those guys drill holes in the, in the dirt? How many cups and how much did it cost and what WTF, I'm going to say, WTF, okay? What are you talking about? Come on! You guys weren't even going to be down there protesting today, so they just gave us a little practice in how quickly we could get down there. But, you know, that just illustrates the over-the-top, heavy-handed approach of the Barnett government. You know, today we're going to be arguing about the anti-terrorist bill. It's like, come on, do you need more police powers to stop men and women from protecting their wetlands? Come on. You know? So, Dean Nalder said he's going to protect the environment. Do you believe him? Is there any evidence that this government has protected the environment so far? Did we have to take him to court to stop James Price Point? Are we taking him to court next week to stop the Row 8? There you go. Thanks so much everyone for coming out. I know it was short notice and it really is testament to your organisation, your passion and your determination. We're going to need all of those things because we're going to stop this road. Come up, Come up to question time at two o'clock. You've got to mention the white elephant in the room. <laughs> things remind me I've got to mention... To Mr. Okay, so people are remind me I've got to mention the elephant in the room over here. And that was the white elephant. It's come back, Rowena. She's come back to where she came from, Parliament House. <laughs> it was offered to Colin Barnett. He didn't want it, strangely enough. To, um, that at quarter to three. Office. For all of you who can, can come up to the public gallery, that'd be great. Otherwise, we'll see you on the hustings. Thanks very much for coming.